subscribe to my channels. Guys, see my fellow Dan John Bull Mark. It's supposed to be variegated. I'm not pruning it. I haven't been doing a good job of pruning it. While there are some leaves that are still variegated. The green has taken over. I think I'm going to do some work and cleaning it up, pruning it. I also had a black ants attack. I um, placed it out in the yard a late evening with, to get some fresh rainwater. And um, black ants took it over, but I took care of that. This is the brown soil I use for my plants as well. As I said, I'm back. <laughs> Let me give you a rundown on what's going on here. So what we have is a situation in here. As I said, it continues. I'm having a um, fish getting seen dead fish. <laughs> Again, I keep blaming the um, African zebra cichlid. It is very possible. It is just irregular dramatics between these cichlids. I saw a second one. They took about a week feeding on that carcass. The upside down catfish and they are the ones mainly benefiting together with that um, African zebra cichlid. I also had some Venusas breeding here yesterday. And what I saw taking place is um, I'll give you a little clipping of that. The Leparanus, the African zebra, are the main culprits. And oh yes, those, um, i trying to remember the name. Yeah, the Cuckoo, Synodontis, Catfish. All of them are going and um, grabbing the eggs. Because the female, as you know, in the cichlids release the egg, the male fertilizes it and then the female catches it in the mouth. Um, the cuckoo catfish, from what I read up on it, he's an opportunist. They will come and, you know, grab up the eggs, eat the eggs from the cichlids, but sometimes they themselves will drop eggs and that's how here they go the cuckoo catfish that's how they will sometimes breed so sometimes they don't take care of their own eggs and the cichlids end up holding cuckoo catfish eggs in their mouth that was a real interesting video i looked at from national geographic when i was doing some research on that cuckoo catfish because as i said that one bit did breed in here and i was trying to figure out you know why i was only seeing one why not more? And um, that's how I stumbled up. Oh, this is the this is the baby here. Now big. And it's for the two parts earlier. I also continue to monitor the breeding of the exotics. Um, you know, I got the jewel cichlid. I see they looking like they're engaging in some breeding behavior. I also saw Obi cichlid. So you know one of the first fish I was showing here since I got that African zebra was the um the Obi cichlid that that was the carcass they were eating on. Um I saw a baby Obi cichlid. <laughs> so at one point I was thinking they weren't um, really breeding. But I did get a lot of female Obis. So I guess that paid off, but I so far have only seen one Obi cichlid. As you know, I also showed you the red Makobi baby. You don't always get to see these fish in here, you know, but um, yeah, so I'm anxious. I have to do some research to see if the um, the red hooks and the silver dollars will breed in here. Um, I have a lot of breeding behavior with the bala sharks, but I never saw any baby bala sharks. But there's a lot of breeding behavior with them. The tin foil barbs, I would love to see them breeding here as well. 
um, they will be more or less egg layers so they won't hold anything in their mouth and again because there's so much fish in here you're really gonna unless I pull them which I won't because it's it's a it's a natural habitat I call this so what you're gonna get is probably luckily you might get a bala shark or a tin for those leg layers the green terrors um, I haven't seen any action from them as I said we did get the okaras the the okar electrical car and the I saw babies with that that's a egg layer so as I said you will get you know a few may survive um, open the green Texas cichlid or could also breed as well I think it's a pair see I'm never sure if it's a pair I have um, most times what I do I try to get like five between three and five fish and what I see happen is there will be a battle and then you'll see two remain so I'm speculate that you know it's normally a pair it may not be but you know you'll see because the same thing happened with the electric blue cars I had a, about three to, I had about five I think ended up with two the two being a pair and they breed it now so that's what that's how it goes you see I could get these um, red hooks let me tell you the red hooks have been very impressive in terms of their growth I actually got them before silver dollars I have silver dollars too and they came in they were smaller and they ended up being so much bigger growing really fast and healthy you know one thing I would say the rain is falling in the background so I'm not so sure if I'm getting drowned out but you know what what is interesting you know in a in a size pond like this I often wonder um, you know I wonder if I had the South and Central American cichlids in here and you know fish like it in foil and the red hooks and the silver dollars and ballas if I had less African cichlids would those guys have bred in this size pond and I'll tell you those guys are not aggressive you know they're not fighting it's not routine for that while the I call the cichlids the the, the, the salt water fresh water fish uh, because of the nice coloration and thing um, that set of fighting unnecessary dramatics you know you could do it out that but I also understand that it also keeps a balance in the, in, the, in, the, in the environment too because you know if the fishes were just breeding breeding and at some point you will uh, max out you will max out the size of the, 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 the pond ratio the water ratio will become difficult and harder to maintain so I get it but you know sometimes I kind of wonder I also have the front toasters they are small they are slow growers they have always said that but you know I have some I tried having them in the past and they just disappeared I don't know if it was that crazy set of red devils that I had that probably killed them out but they I have about three of them here again as I said I usually go with stock up three to five and they have been doing nicely growing slowly one of them getting bigger faster I don't know if you can see the synodon this and they all three together I get the feeling I have two females and one male that baby may have been a female yeah but you know I, I also look to see if the front toaster will be green this is the green Texas the green Terra sorry you know these fish don't wait around the only fish that loves the cameras is, the, is this this Oscar He's always, always willing to put a bomb, you know. Guys, I'm trying to remember what this fish is. There's so much fish to remember, but it's the green something, something. I, I, again, I have two of these, out about four of them. Um, interesting to see the two is up here. Again, would they breed? That's our close up of the green terror. One of them. And I was talking earlier about the, uh, the green sabrum. Here he comes. Very, very interactive. 
as I said, I am convinced it's up here. Uh, this also is a crazy. Right, this is an albino convict cyclone. So I had a whole set of, well, not a whole set, I had about four or five of them, and also the regular convict cyclone, grey and black. And that convict cyclone, two of them, the four till death, four till the end, I think one kill one and somebody else kill the other one. <laughs> and, um, you know, these, these convicts, the albino, I don't know if they're stunted, but they're not getting big. I've noticed that. But as I was saying, with that green serum, I'm really hoping I could get that green serum to, uh, to breed in here. But I'll do some more research. Yeah. And I'm going to do a project, if not for the Christmas for the New Year for sure. Now I have a little what they call seven wonder the world and aloes there and one or two little weeds in between. Um, I actually saw someone who has a backdrop. Well, they, they have it on their front curb in their property. Not a fish pond, but they just set up a plant bed. And they had a lot of nicer selections of plants. So I'm going to do a little more. Actually, I, I have a plant shop I go to that I've seen some nice selections. So I think for a project I have for Christmas or the New Year, I'm going to pull out all of these plants and redo here. The only thing I'm going to leave is the aloes. Because the same wonder is a while, it grows a lot. I hate to have to pull them and, um, you know, not have anywhere to transplant them. You know, that's also part of it, man. Sometimes, sometimes you just have to do it. You just have to do it. So, I'll figure it out. As I said, I don't like to um, kill these things, but we'll see how that goes. But I'm going to put a nicer set of plants in the backdrop there. Koi is actually a recovered koi. He went all white and he started like this one here. <laughs> okay. I did say I was going to remove a lot of the um, squirrel and fox tail from in this, this planted pond, planted pond. Um, and go with a lot more of the Java moss and the well not in Java which I have over here and the lotus this side is much more manageable the fish could swim through the air you know but um I think I'll introduce some different plants in here plants I could grow Trying to see if I can see the red. The um, red rainbow fish or the Bosmani rainbows that I have in here. See, not Bosmani, but it's always going to be hard to pick up these guys in here, you know, the glare and all of that. But I did get some neon. Was morning and red rainbow fish. I know the neon wouldn't breed, or I will be lucky for them to breed. But um, the red definitely breeds. Of course, I have a lot of 
cichlids in here, these are baby cichlids that I transferred from the 1400 gallon. I have a lot of live bears, flatties and mollies and guppies and so that's why when it's pick and plant, it does guys have a better survival chance, but cichlids living with these fish. Everything in harmony. It's a balance I hardly feed. This pond is a mature pond. 450 gallons. If I feed here, it's like, to be honest, once or twice a month. It's so much. Yes, baby shrimps. Yes, shrimp in here. I have um, albino bristle no plecos. I did release some crayfish and crabs in here. Not even sure if those guys bred in here, but they died. I haven't cleaned this window in this fish pond for some time. I have the window closed off. No, no particular reason, more than sometimes I have it open, clean it out, use the window. I find sometimes because I'm by a road, people drive around and they slow down and they, they see the fish swimming in the window because they can see through the yard. Not on this side of course, but on the other side. And so they stop and you know, kind of I just prefer not to have that visibility of people coming here, but I'll bring it up for Christmas, guys. I'll bring it up for Christmas. I feel this guy is about three feet now. I have to do a measure. I'll do that for Christmas too. And of course I had to improvise with my um, with my canister for my UV light. It sprung a leak. So I took a floor put this container to take up the leak and drop back inside the pond. It's seemingly getting worse. <laughs> it's flowing a little heavier. But this contraption still works. I mean guys, when you have these ponds, you're going to realize it's a very costly exercise to maintain all of this. And after some time, you'll need to call in your MacGyver skills to improvise as opposed to just buying everything. You know, the pumps shut down just like that. Filters shut down. Filters are a little more durable, but when the pump goes down, that's it. You have to get a new pump. Back here in Trinidad, these pumps are expensive. You know, but if you don't have that level of oxygen flowing in, again, your cost, it run cost their fish, start losing fish. So there are certain things that you could get away with, other things you can't. So I'll leak in this UV light system, I can get away with. <laughs> you know, the bigger question is why did this frame of the body take that leak? As I tell you, and this black guy here, this black iridescent shot is the biggest black one as well. I feel he's also three feet. Um, I have two others, one other black, one other albino. That's smaller. This is my biggest koi here. That looks like it's about two feet show plus. About two and a half feet, I feel. He has something on his eye. I feel it's a growth. I'm really not sure if it's the color of the eye, but it looks like a growth. I mean, you know, some of these things really are disturbing, but, you know, I'll keep monitoring to see. The baby red Makobi coming up nicely.
The Du Boisy babies always look so nice with these spots when they get bigger, you know. <laughs> I would, would have preferred if they, they remained with those nice spots right through. These one of the big ones here. Sparrow's blue face, Du Boisy. I said the red hook looks good. I noticed the tin foil bob swimming with the red hook. I don't know if they are a family. These are the jewel cichlids. As I said, I suspect they into breeding, breeding pattern. And they are chosen this area. I just have to figure out how they plan to do that. Or we'll try to make arrangements for them to have success in here. It's not gonna be easy, I'm sure. But so far they, they seem to be fitting in. We can be expecting to use our open flat rock like that to breed. I hope that's not what they're doing. But that will be fish food easy. If have so much rocks in here, I expect them to go in between the rocks and try that. And this is the Venustas, as I said earlier. You see how body boosted up. This side is. They are kind of aggressive breeders. As I said, a lot of the fish seem to want to relish the, the eggs.
subscribe to my channels.